All right, so in the last example, we looked at um, a fairly simple version of face tracking that gave us just a couple of points on the face. Um, next, we're gonna look at a really amazing, I mean, I am totally blown away by this, um, another model from TensorFlow called Face Mesh. And you can see here from the demo, Face Mesh gives you, was it 486 points on your face? Um, and not only that, but it's able to uh, approximate three dimensional points. So it knows what's closer and what's further away. I, I don't know, I'm totally blown away by this. So we're going to look at how to implement this in P5JS. Again, um, I'll include the link to the documentation here. And it shows you how you would install this and some sample code. But um, once again, just like before, it's going to take a little work for us to make this work with P5JS. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is import a whole bunch of stuff in our index page. That's all here. Um, this includes some extra stuff that will make TensorFlow work correctly, plus these um, face detection or face landmarks um, model. So with that, we can go ahead into our basic code. And I've already kind of populated this with some of the stuff. Um, we, I talked about this in more detail in the previous video. So if you missed that one, you might want to go back and I'll, uh, it explains some of the stuff a little more. But I've got my video, I've got my model, and I've got my face. I'm loading the face model here in an asynchronous function. This is very similar to before. The details of it are just a little bit different. Uh, one thing I'm adding here is saying I only ever want you to look for one face. It can look for, I think, five or six or something. And in this case, it's just limiting it. I think it's going to make it run a little better in the browser. Um, I've got this scale point function, again, that's going to convert the coordinates from the video to the canvas. And then I've got this asynchronous function that'll get the face. And this works basically the same as before. It's just its format is a little different. Um, and then, oh, and then in draw, I'm just making sure, once again, the video is loaded, the model is loaded, I get the face, and if the face um, has data attached to it, then I'm printing that to the console. And you can see here what it looks like. Um, this has much more, you know, it's tracking 486 points, so it's got a lot more here. It has a bounding box, so that's like a really simple square drawn around the face, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got our mesh, we're not gonna use mesh. It does have the scaled mesh, which is all of the points. Um, for some reason, it has 478 points. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, and then it has these annotated sections. And this allows you to break it out by specific parts of the face. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. For now, we're going to focus on the scaled mesh. And let's just kind of see the result. Um, so I can go ahead and I'm going to comment out this for now. And we can. We can draw this. Now, this is going to be real easy. Um, I'm just going to draw a bunch of circles at those points. So something like this. And then um, it's going to be face.scaled mesh. And again, that's why printing to the console is really helpful. It lets you see what stuff is called. And then I do need to scale this to screen coordinates. And then I can just draw a circle. Just like this, let's make it three pixels. Now the face mesh model is much, much bigger than the one we saw before. So you can see it takes quite a while to load, um, which can be really frustrating while you're prototyping, but um, it's going, it's going. You get to hang out here and wait, hopefully. This can also be frustrating if you have errors in your code because it works for a long time, <laughs> only then to tell you that there's a problem. So hopefully this is gonna, hopefully this is gonna work for us. Come on, buddy. Hmm. Is something wrong? I think it's not giving us any errors. So let's see. We might want to include a um, console.log here. So let's add console.log loading model. This can be, you know, this can be hard because it's loading it asynchronously. It could be a problem with my Wi-Fi. Who knows? Um, and then we can say console.log. Uh, done. And let's see, now we have to start it over, but at least we can see it's loading the model. It says it's done. Oh, <laughs> this is so stupid. Um, maybe you already noticed what was going on and you're yelling at me. We're drawing white dots on a white screen. Duh, Jeff. Of course we can't see it. It was working. That's pretty dumb. Let's add the video. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. You know, um, Often this is where I'm like, oh, start over on the demo, but we all make mistakes. I want to see you, you know, this happens to all of us. Okay, let's try this again. 
There we go, it's loaded. Hopefully we get some video. There we go, okay, it's kind of slow. And once again, it's a little, it's quite a bit more laggy than it normally is. Um, I think that's because I'm using my camera to record this this video, but um, hopefully you can see that and it looks okay. It's not, it's gonna work much better on your computer, um, but it's making this mesh super incredible. Like the fact that it's able to do this. Um, I do think though that, you know, all these circles of this scaled mesh is kind of overkill. It looks cool, but it's, it looks like a demo of the software rather than a thing made with it. So um, let's, let's look at some other things that this can do. Um, if we turn this back on, oops, we can take a look at the annotation. So once it loads it again, um, we get to wait, um, but it gives us that scaled matches all the points. And there I am frozen again, looking just amazing. Um, our annotations are broken out by these different regions of the face. That way we don't have to keep track of the points. You can, if you scroll all the way down at the bottom of the documentation, there is this image, which is very hard to read. The text, the type here is like really, really hard to read, but it shows you the numbers of all the points. And sometimes it can be difficult too, to figure out like which point you want. So they've gone ahead and done a lot of this work for you. And one of the things it includes is the silhouette, which is the outline of your shape. So let's, or your face. So let's go ahead and draw this. So I'm gonna do a nice blue fill, semi-transparent, no stroke. And I'm just gonna copy paste this. We're sitting around long enough anyway, watching this thing load. So I'm using begin shape and end shape. Um, instead of scaled mesh, I'm going through uh, the annotations. And in particular, I want silhouette which I can see here is a list. So it's 36 points. Um, so I'm grabbing the each point, I'm scaling it and drawing it on screen. Oops, let's turn off this here just so we can see it. So I'm sorry, this doesn't make for the most exciting video because you have to <laughs> watch it load here. Um, but yeah, so we can access, oh, I think it reloaded again. Um, anyway, we can access those points and draw stuff with them. This is fairly simple as well, but this would be a great way as you're making a mask um, to kind of just create an outline of your face. Now it doesn't, you can see it doesn't capture the top part of my head, um, but it works pretty well in terms of my overall face. And you might be able to kind of estimate the top of the head by playing with these points. Pretty cool. Then um, let's, let's try one more thing here and um, we'll draw some some shapes on my face. So once again, I'm gonna grab these guys here. Um, so this is again from the annotations, um, the iris of my eye. Um, it's able to, it's this detail, it's able to track the center of your eyeball. And it's very hard to test it um, because you gotta look at your screen to see it. But if I move my eyes, but not my head, it's gonna track that at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, now the iris is gonna give this to me once again, in this um, like list format, it's actually, I think maybe four points. So it's like drawing a circle, um, but I'm just grabbing the first one. It's a good enough approximation for me. And um, then we can draw something with this. So let's, you know what, again, I'm gonna just copy paste here. And, um, you know, we could draw these at a fixed size like we did before um, in the last example. But what happens if I move forwards and backwards, obviously my face gets bigger in the screen and that um, the, the diameter then is gonna stay the same, which is not gonna look so natural. Um, so what I've done here is I'm using the bounding box, which this also gives us to figure out the width of my face. So um, the bounding box here is in top right and bottom, sorry, top left and bottom right points. So it's, can I do this in the camera <laughs> kind of? Uh, so it's gonna draw a box around my face. And um, then I'm just subtracting the left side X from the right side X, and that gives me the width. From there, then I've just picked a size that seems good, the width divided by six, and then I can use this to scale my points. And I think this is something that you're gonna wanna do so that, um, yeah, as you're moving around, the, the stuff that you're drawing is gonna respond to the size of your face. This is very similar to how we've done um, yeah, there we go, looking freaky. 
Um, this is very similar to how we've used width and height variables before, um, but now it's relative to the face rather than the screen. And what's really cool is that this will track me as I turn my head. A lot of older systems would really fail the minute you start to twist your head or turn sideways like this, which is pretty incredible. And so now I've got these weird eyeballs. Let's keep going with the weirdness. Um, you're going to make lots of weird stuff. Um, let's grab the mouth. And this is where I think this gets really, really cool. Um, so the mouth is divided into several sections. It's divided by the upper and the lower parts, and it's divided by uh, further by the inner lip and the outer lip. Then you can pick how you want to use this, and there's lots of ways you could combine these or make really, really cool stuff. Um, so I'm creating an array called mouth. I'm going through both the upper lips and the um, inner lip, or sorry, upper and lower lips on the inside and grabbing all those points and I'm scaling them while I'm at it just so I have those dimensions. And then we can draw, um, we can draw something. So let's draw the mouth like this. So, you know, now it's just points. I'm just adding uh, vertices, you know, and we could totally do that all right inside here if you wanted. Um, I'm not sure why I made it a list. I think, you know, I kind of like that. It makes a little sense. Maybe I want to do more stuff with this. Um, but you could certainly combine this all into one thing. And once again, we're going to watch it load. Um, but it should then draw a, around. There we go. <laughs> My mouth. It's looking extra laggy here because it it is laggy. Um, it's not going to be perfect. I found wide mouth works really good. Neuro kind of kind of freaks out. So it's not going to always work perfectly. But um, I suspect a lot of cartoons these days are made using something like this. So they're recording the actor and then tracking their mouth, probably using something a little more robust. Um, and then, yeah, automatically drawing the mouth on the characters, which is pretty sweet. Um, let's look at one more thing. We could certainly grab specific points from the mesh. So the mesh is all those little dots. If we knew we had a specific point that we wanted to use, um, you know, you know, maybe you want to use like the cheeks or the bottom of the chin or something like that that's not in your annotated list, you could do that as well. So let's run this. Um, so I'm grabbing a point for the nose. There is, um, there is an annotated nose point, but I just wanted to show you how this would work. And then um, basically I'm just drawing this like glowing nose here. So I'm using a for loop and changing the transparency and this will track me around. And again, what I love is like, look how my nose point you know, depending on what order I draw it, is in front of my eyes, which makes it have this real three-dimensional feel to it, which is pretty cool. Um, so once again, you know, this is not that exciting and looks really freaky, um, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what's possible using um, this face mesh. I think it's really, really uh, super cool and um, lots more that you could think of with this stuff here. Basically, you're going to grab points either from the annotations or from the mesh itself, scale them to the screen, and then that's the real work happens as you start creatively thinking about how to use this stuff.